Does ADOC Silvermax live up to its reputation? I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks, everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Gray Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then, with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now, the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then, once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X. And that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing. And uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity, thus the gray card plus rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I want to show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you want to go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. Tri-X again in blue. The Silver Max is in red. We can see that it is pretty much a straight line. So we should have excellent tonal separation throughout the entire range on the film. The toe is a little bit steeper from the flat line, which means hopefully we will have excellent shadow separation on par with films like T-Max of uh, 100 and 400. So not much to say here since the uh, straight line is pretty well represented. So let's see if the prints actually show this good tonal separation uh, in reality. Here we have our Adox, 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 Silvermax uh, 100 speed film. Here's our Tri-X 400. This actually did come in at a 100 speed. That's good. We are getting pretty decent performance with our spectrum. However, uh, I see that we are getting just a touch darker red, so a little less red sensitive. That does not mean we're more blue sensitive. You can see our cyan is pretty even. Um, the only color here that is lighter than the rest would be yellow. So yellow is just a touch lighter but technically it is over here too. So about the same performance on those tones, the red just coming in 
a little darker than the green and blue. That might give us a little bit more texture in the skin tone, which just look on first glance mm, seems to be the case, particularly in this part of my forehead and here on my cheek, uh, because overall the contrast here and the whites, grays, and blacks seem the same, so these neutrals are pretty much the same, but it looks like my reds might be coming in just a touch darker on my forehead. Uh, but that's about it for the overall view. Uh, it looks pretty good from here, so let's zoom in and take a look at the grain and sharpness. So here on our first shot where we can see the silhouetted ear against the background, we can see that the grain for a 100 speed film looks really, really close to the 400 speed Tri-X. So two stops slower, but the grain is almost identical in size. Tonality is pretty good. Uh, I feel like the shadow under the eye is a little bit deeper. I don't think that's from exposure. I think that's from just the red in my skin coming out a little bit darker because the actual shadow is about the same. Here on the silhouetted shoulder against the background, we can get a clearer picture of that grain. Again, to my eye, it looks the same in terms of size. So side by side, these two prints look identical. It would be really, really hard pressed to, uh, to identify them if I hadn't labeled them because the grain and tonality really seem the same. But that is surprising considering that it is two stops slower. Okay, here on the lighted side of my shoulder, the texture of the shirt comes through nice and clear. The sharpness of the ribbing on my collar is uh, exactly what I would want to see. It is not soft in the grain or anything like that. Nothing to complain about here. Everything looks exactly the way that you would expect it to. All right, here we are in the lighted side of my face. We are getting good texture and detail in the pores of my skin. All that sort of stuff comes out the same. The separation of tones on my skin. I've talked about the differences before about Ilford and Kodak and how they separate these high tones. I feel like this particular film is pretty similar to Tri-X and Kodak films in general on how it separates these tones. Although we are looking at a skin tone with a bit of red in it and that red sensitivity may be increasing the difference between tones. Unfortunately, we don't have too much to go by other than that in this particular photograph. So right now I'm gonna say, yeah, the tonal se separation seems very Kodak-like as opposed to Ilford-like in how it treats those high values. Is that attributable to the red sensitivity or the curve of the film? I don't know. From this photograph, I can't, I can't discern that. Otherwise, I mean, it's a pretty good film. Only down point for me, and this is just me, is the fact that I'm getting the same grain size at two stops slower. I was hoping that it might have a finer grain like we've seen with 100 speed films from uh, Agfa, Ilford, Kodak. Um, but considering some of the other films we've seen at, at the 100 speed, it, it seems uh, better than some of the other 100s. So I put this maybe in the mid range for small grain at 100 speed. All right, that's going to do it for this film. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to help support this channel so we can make more videos like this and get more materials to test out, you can go to my Patreon page or my merchandise page down in the links below. Uh, if you'd like to discuss this film or others in more depth, uh, you can go to my Discord, which is also linked down below. And I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.